you very much. Thank you for the introduction. It's actually a very good talk right after Gaurav talk because the, the talk is quite related to that. Okay. Yes, can we switch to the PPT? So basically it's related to a book called AI for Humanity, Building a Sustainable Air for the Future, published by Wiley just recently came up in June. Uh, it's a book that we just got published. A Chinese version will be coming up soon. So this is my talk. Uh, AI for Humanity, uh, sustainable, uh, towards sustainable AI. You probably have many questions what it is. Uh, first of all, the topic I'm going to talk about, quite a lot number of slides, the headlines, the current nature of AI, which is Gaurav talked about some of it with Stephen Hawkins, what are the dilemma we are facing as humanity, and how do we build towards sustainable AI. In fact, in the in the uh, Wuwa uh, application, the apps, I asked a question, is AI a type of cognitive XR? Because XR, a lot of them are very visual. Is it a type of cognitive XR? Uh, that is actually a tool that is actually interacting between us and that. So uh, AAA is a think tank, private think tank that I started about eight years ago. We actually do a lot of thought leaderships and also ecosystem engagement like this, as well as advocacies in terms of some of the initiative we are working on to make sure that we humanity are mitigating our risk as what Stephen Hawking has been talking about. So this is how the book looks like. Uh, what is Sustainable Air for Humanity, which is a mission that we do for our think tank, is to align uh, AI to humanity values based on governance. I've been talking about it for close to 10 years, but very hard for people to understand until about two years ago when ChatGPT came out, I don't have to explain myself anymore. Second, uh, it's about the sustainability of AI. How many people know AI has been around for 70 years? Okay, good. So we have gone through two winters. I went through one winter myself. I spent about 20 years in, in the US doing AI. Then there was a winter. Then the internet came, mobile internet came. Now AI made a comeback. So there are a lot of lessons learned we need to remember before we get into another winter. Gen AI has, is experiencing a little bit of the gen winter right now. Third is about AI for sustainability towards the United Nations SDG goal. So the book recently I gave a copy to Tush Vityo. How many know is Tush Vityo? Simple Minister of Minist uh, Development and uh, in Information. She's a person leading the AI initiative in Singapore. And these are all the different people who have supported my book in terms of the message and the advocacy. And these are all the people who have been buying and reading, giving me feedback. And it's available on Amazon. Feel free to go find out where it is. Okay, headlines. Very quickly. Every day you got headlines. How many watch the Eric Smith uh, video? You got to watch it. <laughs> Because the video are not supposed to be public. But unfortunately, he didn't know about it. So inside, he talk about the context window, AI agents, and text to action. No need to talk about it. These are technical things. Very exciting stuff into the technology from the Silicon Valley in a very candid manner. He talk about TikTok ban. Then he talk about maybe you can steal some music video. Those are a little bit controversial. People brought up about it. Of course, he mentioned about Google. People are not working hard anymore, etc., etc. Of course, you also talk about the AI superpower and also the AI race, right? So these are things that he brought up. These are all no, nothing special to me. But what is most important is what he mentioned about this point. He said that one of the one important issues is to detect dangers in an AI system. And because the system may have learned something dangerous, we cannot tell specifically what it is. <laughs> That's a scary part with the last language model or future AI as well. And we don't know how to ask. Prompt it to tell us. It's a little like uh, this gentleman has become bad, he has learned something, but we know what he has learned and we cannot ask him what it is. That is the kind of AI system we are building out right now. With hundreds and thousands or millions of agents we will be building, we are going to be have a lot of problems figuring out how to govern them. So, board members are worried. Uh, people are talking about heading into the winter for Gen AI, and I'm not surprised I've gone through that because the hype is really high right now. And bubble is bigger than the 90s, which I went through. And also weapons, uh, AI weapons are being used to decide in the military who I should kill or not kill. So these are really what's happening. Political differences aside, but the reality is that AI is being used in that kind of use in the world. So, what is AI nature? How many people think AI is inevitable? Okay, good. 
I also think so. If you look at the history of humankind to the cognitive revolution, in agricultural revolution, the scientific revolution, augmentation revolution to the industrial revolution, information revolution, and now the intelligent revolution, it's inevitable. We're going to get to our brain. Uh, we're going to figure out how we think, and therefore we can build AI to think how we think, right? So AI is also very VUCA. If you have theoretical foundation in AI, you know that in the 80s and 90s, we do a lot of symbolic AI, a lot of heuristics are being used. Now we're using uh, deep mind, uh, deep, deep learning, very statistical. We don't understand how it works. Now with the big uh, large language model, it's even more VUCA. So this is a history of AI, the chart that, uh, that well, actually inside my book. Somebody draw this picture beforehand, a few years ago. So we, can, we see AI has gone to a multiple boom and winter. And uh, so basically there's this period, uh, before I go there, there's this second uh, book. I was there. I was in Austin, Texas, in the research lab, doing AI research, the most advanced AI research then. There's uh, something called FGCS, the fifth generation computer project started by Japan during the US, China, uh, Japan tech war. There's a thing called MCC, there's a research lab in Austin, Texas, which I was a member of the scientific team. Then, uh, later on, you see AI went into the winter. Guess what? It was AI in disguise. There's the most famous AI company uh, we have been using the application called Google, right? You've been using AI without you knowing it because it was in disguise. It was using all kinds of knowledge graph, crawling the web, right? Building out all kinds of ontology. Of course, Google has gone beyond that with the invention of many other techniques, including the transformer. Then, of course, a lot of research think tanks started. In fact, the most advanced is 1993 in Mila, in Montreal. They are always ahead. The Canadians are very good. They are always ahead in many thought, in deep learning, also now in ethics and many other things. So these are many research uh, think tanks have started, and I started AIIII in 2017 in Singapore because I felt we need to do something, at least in Asia, what we learned from Canada, how the US and the Western country have been looking into AI ethics and governance. So, is AI sustainable? Uh, what does it mean? I mean, can it continue without going to a winter? Well, technology-wise, well, there are paper published saying that hallucination cannot be solved. <laughs> it's too statistical. There are always some problems, no matter how you fine-tune it. The AI model will collapse if you keep use a lot of data that we generate to feed the data. So there are theoretical foundation for that. Is it commercialization? Is it commercial sustainable? Look at open air as an example. Started at the non-profit, become profit, non-profit, hybrid. There was uh, Sam Owens being fired last year. He was reinstated. Then they introduced the super alignment project. Then he was cancelled. Very vocal, right? The most advanced AI company is facing all kinds of problems. <laughs> Now you can imagine the future world with thousands of startups like that, or companies. And then they form a security board, safety board. Then they say they have a 90-day plan to fix it. Then they, they designate a national security person to take over. Very interesting. Now they say that open AI is going to run out of money. So AI is a very, very complex. Most successful of the world, a company will not survive. We do not know. Eh? But there's a good sign of commercialization. Of course, ELA which is the, one of the co-founder of OpenAI, chief scientist, he left. He started a safe, super intelligent company, SSI. I think that's one of the most frontier AI projects in the world right now. Guess what? It's all about governance. It's not about how powerful it is. It's about how do you make sure it's safe. And we should all be concerned. You should watch this company. It's still in stealth. We don't know how Technic is doing it. There are different people in the world who are working on some of these projects. That could be could become the next frontier in AI research and startup. Governance, even more VUCA. The whole Davos in January, World Economic Forum has become an AI conference. Everything is about AI. Guess what? The United Nations have only formed another organization, a big bureaucracy, but they are so concerned. Of course, Chinese government always started the governance for the world, right? I think Xi Jinping has mentioned that. Then Henry Kissinger went to Beijing talking about, talking about US and China need to work together because this is a nuclear technology to define our geopolitics since the Second World War. He was 99 year old. He went to deliver a message to warn all the political leaders, please take care of common people like us. Don't make mistakes like nuclear technology. 
Then the Pope started to talk about AI concern ethics. They call it algo ethics in G7. So when he comes to speak, something must be of great concern to him. Then, of course, uh, Geoffrey Hinton from uh, the Turing Award winner, he mentioned many risks I think Gaurav was talking about. He was actually on the side of, uh, don't worry about AI, it's going to be okay. After the invention of ChatGPT, he started to get really worried. Eh? Agree or disagree, he's not a dumb guy. <laughs> he's the scientist who invented deep learning. Eh? Pay attention. Of course, Elon Musk has been talking about it 2017. Like or don't like him, he's very honest to tell you what he thinks. Okay? Of course, Stephen Hawking, the scientist, I think Gaurav mentioned that earlier. He was warning us in 2014. He's a physicist. He said it could be the last thing we human invent. So it's not so AI next phase development is not about government, it's about individually we need to do something. Because all, everything we do, or action or data matters. So AI is a crossroad. So to be or not to be, that's the question. I'm gonna phrase it as to AI or not to AI. But humanity's nature, we don't have the choice. We will do AI anyway. But we need to figure out how to make sure we do it safe. So the concept in my book I talk about is AI dilemma. Whether you look at a surveillance system using computer vision, in some culture in Asia, we think less monitor us, make sure the bad guy are all kicked out, right? In the US, privacy is important. There's no right and wrong, eh? AI is agnostic. It's just we have different systems, different value, but the technology is nothing wrong, and humanity will never agree. Eh? Uh, computer vision, Gen AI. Creatively, you can generate pictures uh, that won an award on the left hand side, but it can also be used for defect, right? Same technology. Weaponization, it could be used to defend, it cannot be used to attack. Of course, in Ukraine, a lot of drones are being used right now. These are in actually in operation. Eric Smith said he's investing in many companies doing it. He even claimed he became an arms dealer okay? in a joking way, but I think it's relatively the same. Then if you look at the investment, both US and China investing into a lot of autonomous intelligent vehicles and systems. That is very scary. <laughs> this system could be out of control. And then if we are not careful, we may end up like what nuclear technology is, mutual assured destruction. We got to watch out. Make sure our politicians don't press the button wrongly. Of course, the worst dilemma is going to be are we, if we do AI become super intelligent, human in level intelligent, we all lose our job might be lights up, like what Sam Altman mentioned, right? So that could happen if you look, look at the uh, Kurt Wells uh, book in 2045. So there's also a book of a precipice that talk about it's going to be AI risk is much higher than pandemic, higher than climate change, but we are spending so little, little of resources and time on AI risk. We're spending a lot of time on climate change, <laughs> but which this is higher, we should be dealing with it. But guess what? Ask ourselves in our society how much time and effort, except you are sitting here listening to me, I think it's the beginning of that uh, activities to advocate for that. So this is the call of the information. So I want to introduce something called this, thing, this statement uh, called What If We Are Right. How many heard of this? Good. This is written by a Nobel Prize winner called a British product, the one uh, James Chadway. He discovered the neuron. Neutron, sorry. Neuron. And he said in 1941, when was nuclear bomb invented? 1945, right? In 1941, as a scientist, he believed that nuclear technology would be invented. And he was really worried. It's a little bit like what we happen today now, right? Guess what? Today, we think AI may not happen. Singularity will not happen. Human level AI may not happen. There's no risk. <laughs> but if it happened, what if we are right, it happens? Everything will be irrelevant. All the money you make, all the children you make, it doesn't matter anymore. Okay? We will be served, we will be slaves to the AI managing us. It's not happening yet, but we need to be ready. Okay? I remember the spring of 1941. To this day, I realized that, that a nuclear bomb was not only possible, it was inevitable. You mentioned AI is inevitable also, right? Guess what? Talk is easy. Do we have any action? Ask yourself. So that's why I wrote the book. So the book has 10 chapters from AI debate, AI trap, AI dilemma, AI history, rethinking, sustainable AI for humanity, and some of the 
recommended initiative we can pursue. It's not a perfect book, but it's a book to bring the message out so that you can go and tell another 10 person. And I talk about the different type of AI dilemma, a different level of risk, and hopefully people read it, give me feedback, I keep improving on it, get the message out so that we have action to do something. Okay, so idea is sustainable AI. Our perspective is a think tank. We may not be right, be wrong, but have some perspective on it. Number one, we do solve the AI problem, we cannot take a pure technology or pure commercial or pure governance angle. We need to take a balanced approach. We need to take some of the wisdom about yin and yang. There's no right and wrong, right? We just want to make sure that we balance it out. Because over-regulations, over-governance, slow down innovation. Too innovative, not careful, we have a bad uh, outcome that we hurt a lot of people. So the balancing, it may sound like a simple principle, but actually it's not well managed because everything is siloed today. Commercial startup, commercial big corporation, government, government, oh, scientists, scientists, you all do different work. There's no synchronization. But luckily you are in Singapore. Singapore is well known for good balance. Okay? We are small enough to be the experiment to try to balance it out. And Singapore has taken some lead in this area. Globally, the big AI superpower are US, China, then the tiny little Singapore is ranked pretty high in terms of readiness. If you're Singaporean, you should be very proud, right? So we have a role to play. Second, we need to rethink our relationship between uh, human and AI. In my book, I talk about many of you probably over here. In fact, this conference to me, I have not attended one for many years, right? The last time I attended was Second Life. That was 15 years ago. Huh? Was very engineering oriented. We built system, we engineer system, we built customer experience. But we need to rethink AI. We don't build AI anymore as an engineering system. We think of how to nurture AI. How you, what kind of value, what kind of data you put into AI will decide how AI is going to evolve to be. Read my book for some of the detail why I think so. But it's a very different thing to think about building to nurture. How many have children here? If you have children, you never build your children or create your children. You nurture your children. And you nurture them to be independent at some point. But there's no guarantee, even if you've done your best job, they will behave the way you want it to be, right, sir? Exactly. That's why we need to be ready. You should be have other measurement in case your kids didn't do right and you can help them or to make sure they don't do things to harm you as well, right? So these are things that we need to go and think through. It may sound like a simple principle, but that is not the approach being taken right now. We are, if the technology people are building it just like a tech and engineering system, it's not nurturing. It's just build it. That's your problem. Governance is your problem. Maintenance is your problem. That is wrong. Because AI will keep evolving. Every second right now with the large language model or the GPU is computing, it is evolving. And nobody knows what it's going to become. So that is one principle. Second, how many heard of hybrid AI? How many heard of neuro-symbolic AI? How many heard of symbolic AI? I'm sure you heard about deep learning, right? Right now, uh, I've been advocating for many years when deep um, uh, learning come along, I say you need to have a hybrid model. Luckily, there is a Nobel Prize winner called Daniel Kahneman. Uh, Kahneman, uh, Kahneman, Kahneman. He wrote a book called Thinking Fast and Slow, talking about how we human think fast and slow. I'm not going to get into that. You need to have different type of AI that we can manage. That's why I think Gaurav talked about the large language model, the foundation must have some reasoning. Reasoning is kind of symbolic representation, right? So these are things that we need to develop as a hybrid AI. And fortunately, recently, DeepMind released a new paper called A uh, New System Can Solve Complex Math Problem. Inside there, other than large language model, what does it have? It has something called alpha proof and alpha geometry. Yeah? This is a symbolic representation ontological system that have a different way of thinking and also necessary to solve the problem of the overall AI capability. And alpha proof, alpha geometry. Of course, Yen Le Kun, who is he? The biggest sponsor for today, Meta, right? He's a chief AI scientist at Meta. 
Oh, the Lama one, Lama 2, Lama 3? He's the guy, he's fine. He talked about towards AI system that can learn, remember, reason, plan, and have common sense. That sounds very human, right? That's exactly the kind of system we want to build. You nurture it, yet stirable, that means governable and safe. You always want to nurture human being in the next generation to be safe also for us, right? So that's the kind of thing we need to be building towards. So last, I want to share one idea. How many people want to make money with AI? One. Okay, you can find it on YouTube. A lot of them. Seven way, ten way. You saw that, right? You saw all this, right? Guess what? I'm going to propose a new idea to all of you. Based on JFK. Who, how, how many know who is JFK? He was assassinated in 1963, right? He said, ask not what the country can do for you. Ask what you can do for the country. Ask not what AI can do for you, but ask what you can do for AI. Therefore, you need to look at the concept called how to make AI with money. Got it, Sabah? It's the other way around. All of us have money or control of money, voting for money, or the government spend money. We have a we have voice. So, I personally advocate that we need to shift from a traditional business model, which I'm sure we are discussing in this conference. Every moment you're inventing your new startup into what we call a humanity first impact funding model. An impact money model must be humanity first. Not, you cannot be, build a company just to make money. Of course, you need to make money to survive. But you need to remember the impact comes first. Impact includes purpose as well as profit. <laughs> you need to make both. And that's why a lot of younger generation today, young people I noticed, I just came from Indonesia, they're also passionate. They want to solve social problems as well. While they want to do a startup, and that's the kind of startup we want. That's our AI for good startup we want to go and advocate and support. We want to do XR for good as well. Every day there will be a new movement in this conference called AWA XR for good. So the in, uh, quickly on the humanity first impact funding model, basically how do you balance between public money, philanthropy money, private money and public market. More detail, you can read my book, you can come talk to me. I'm not going to go to more detail, the 4P model. So last but not least, I want to talk about something that uh, Bill Gates talked about. Recently he came and talked about. Then he said that, well, the last language model is going to have two more turns. That's it. <laughs> I also believe in that. This whole foundational model is going to hit the limit because it's just a scaling law. But he did talk about something very interesting called the metacognition. He said AI needs to develop more R&D on metacognition. What is metacognition? How many know what is metacognition? Good. He's an expert. Metacognition is about thinking about how you think. Eh? How many think how you think? Actually, a lot less people think about how you think all the time. You just think and you make decisions. Impulsive people don't even think. They just, I emotionally love it, I just do it. But good leaders think about how they think, therefore they refine, they ask, hey, uh, my friend, what do you think of this idea? You know how to ask for? Mentorship. No matter how experienced you are. Because we humans have limitations, right? So I want to share one more secret with you. How many know where UNESCO? 1945, formed under the leadership of the, um, the US. I love this UNESCO. What is UNESCO under the constitution that was made in 1945? It says, Since war begins in the minds of men and women like you, and it is in the minds of men and women like you that the defenses of peace must be constructed. Understand what I mean? It is you guys, how you think, decide whether we're going to have peace or not. We need to start with that. And I think that is great wisdom for the UNESCO to be formed in 1945. I think the spirit say, even though the United Nations may not be as strong and influential anymore, but the idea and the wisdom remains. So, UNESCO say, leadership is at the heart of quality education. There is great belief that educational leadership is the second most important factor in explaining the learning outcome. Learning at a multiple level matter from which, from those within the school to those outside the school, as well as middle manager, including those basically means that all of you are leaders. Your mind as a leader is going to be very important to me. Therefore, I'm going to do, 
share something about core education. We'll be talking about AI and education, right? Education for all, education for AI, AI for education. We need to change it to education for AI for humanity, AI for humanity for education. We need to imply the people about AI for humanity, which is part of the book that I wrote to bring the message out. So the call for action, focusing on leader, that's my next action. What? We need to instill the idea of sustainable AI for humanity as a content to the leader. Targeting the leader, and the concept is something what I call meta thinking. Thinking about how you think, which is like the meta cognition that Bill Gates talks about. How many know who is Peter Drucker? Father of modern management, very influential guy, especially uh, in the 80s, you know, things like that. He's thinking. He, what did he say? Management is doing things right. Leadership is about doing the right things. We need to get all our leaders to do the right thing, which is AI for humanity, not AI for money only, right? Second, how many know who Noel Tishu? I He was my instructor. I learned from him for three days in 1998. I love him. He influenced me a lot. He talked about leadership, it's about change and etc. He taught me many techniques. To today, I'm still embracing many of his thoughts. And teachable point of view is one of his key uh, rep, uh, core, core teaching methods. How many of you know who is Ron Howard? Stanford University. True expert in decision analysis. He went through many analysis methods about how you build a nuclear plant for many years. All these complex systems, they went through mm -hmm complex decision making. I actually collaborated with him. He recently is not uh, the best in health, but I was visited him and he taught me many things. So basically, I think we need to go into the meta thinking to train our leader to have meta thinking. As an example, I'm sure you all use Google Map, right? How many depend on Google Map? If you don't have Google Map, can you drive? Please raise your hand. Don't feel embarrassed. You are in big trouble. You are being hijacked by AI. Because you know why? If you rely on Google Maps to drive, after a while you lost confidence in driving, you have no idea how to drive in terms of direct. You know how to drive the vehicle, but you don't know how to drive from point A to point B. And that is a scary thing. Now, this is a small example of AI being used in humanity. If all the whole world decides in everything we do, including Google Map, we are in big trouble. So if you want to be a leader, I'm sure you use this wheel a lot, right? Turn left, turn right. This is a lazy man. I also become lazy. It's human nature. You turn left and right, then if you're lost, ask Google to tell you how to reset, you know, and etc. Right? If you rely on this mode, you're in trouble. You're too dependent for AI to make decisions for you. How many use this view? This is called the meta view. You look at point A and point B, how do you go? And sometimes you say that, hey, why do you take this route? Google, you're wrong. Based on my human experience, this is a better route. Because I know that there's a bomb there, there's a construction going on there, right? You need to practice more meta thinking in terms of having a meta view. Now, that sounds like simple Google Map. But with AI infiltrating in our society and every decision, whether to yourself, have the decision you make for yourself, for your investment decision, for your career, for you as a leader or CEO of a company, you'll be making more and more decisions based on AI, and if you don't have the meta level thinking, you're in deep trouble. And I'm trying to get this thing into every leader I know, starting with 20 or 30 of you. But you have responsibility to get to another 100 of them. Please, it's a very simple concept. Just use the Google Map as an example. Because you yourself admitted that if you are rely on Google Map to drive, you're in deep trouble. Today, suddenly, there's no power. But Google went crazy. You know, Google algorithm may not work all the time. Something it went crazy, especially under the tunnel. Very scary. It went berserk. So, I'm actually working on a new theory, called a new theory called on the future of leadership with AI for humanity. Because my first action of delivering impact is to form the book in terms of the content into the mind of the leader. Thank you very much. You have any questions?
feel free to ask really yeah. tough because it's a lot, it's a dilemma. And he's a professor, so we love challenges. So challenge him the last uh, session of the of the day. Do not be shy. Do not be shy. This is the only chance. You can use chat GPT. To, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think we need the mic here. Okay, use this one. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, hello. Good. I like challenging questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Rong. I think we're missing too many of, uh, too many speeches like this at these conferences. I have one myself tomorrow exactly about leadership and how we can leverage uh, technology for leadership. Very similar messages. And my question is very, very concretely for people to take away. What would you recommend people to do when they get home now, when, when they go to the office tomorrow? Like very, very hands-on. Apart from ordering the book, which I will do immediately after I get it. You can go to Amazon and buy. Well, you can find it easily here. Yeah. Uh, you asked a very good question. When I decided after finish writing the book, express my thought, which I'm promoting, to get it out, I realized that one of the most important things is get to the head of the leaders. That's why I'm focusing on leadership part of things, a new theory of leadership. If I can get every leader to think metally, which I have more detail I can't share today, just too much, not enough time. You can give me another full day, uh, I can talk about it. There are many theories from Ron Howard to Noel Tishi to Peter Drucker. They have very many years of established management theory. I'm not, bu I'm not, uh, I'm actually using them, but I complement with augmentation, the augmented world with that into AI, and there are different how AI will help different part of the decision making, for example. Now, for you, well, I, would, I, I shouldn't say that, I mean, first thing is buy the book, right? That's number one. I'm, of course, I'm not promoting, I just, that's the easiest way to really explain to you. Because why I spent time uh, writing the book. In fact, when we wrote the book, it was very difficult. I already started halfway writing it. Then chat GPT came. It was a very difficult decision, what do I do? But I practically did not change any of my perspective because it was validated by ChatGPT of the human behavior. So many things was validated. So I would say number one, um, if you have the action, if you ask me for action, one of the most common questions asked of me is parents about their children's education, <laughs> and then the ethics of should they use it? Is it considered as cheating? That's the number one question. Number two, what kind of what kind of thing they should be studying for their future? Of course, people have been talking about you need to have critical thinking. Critical thinking is not good enough. You need to have meta level thinking. Critical thinking is like not need to think how to ask questions, but you need to know your way, how you think. And most people cannot visualize how they think. That's why I talked to Ron Howard. Ron Howard has a whole complex theory of how people make decisions and how to make ethical decisions. And then you really work out the system. And those systems are actually very helpful. Now, in education, we need to train people to understand that now. No longer it's an option. You cannot, you cannot manufacture or nurture children just to do things anymore, just like your helper. Those days are over. AI is going to take over robotics, human are going to take out everything. Everybody needs to think how you think, and then therefore you realize that, oh, this part, I need AI to help me. That part, I need AI to help you. At the same time, you practice critical learning, saying that, Oh, this part, I don't trust AI because it's not reliable. So you need to be very aware of that level of thought. Of course, uh, meta-level thinking has first level, second order, third order. You can go multiple level up. Of course, a very good leader, like an uh, excellent leader in our history, they think multiple level up. They think so far ahead. Like Elon Musk, he'll be like so many level up. We can't even imagine how he's thinking. But at least practice second level meta thinking. And I think that is why I want people to know to be aware of this, then read out on meta cognitions and then start to understand how you think. The moment you know how you think, that's something you can do for yourself because that's get your, yourself ready for the future job, see? At the same time, now you know how to apply AI in the, in the places where you need to make decisions. And these are very pragmatic things. But they, nobody thought all this in school right now. This is tell you, do it, uh, check your BTV, use, don't you, make sure you, you declare. These are very tactical things. Ultimately, you can run away from technology, just like we can run away from calculator or PC or your handphone, right? Or Google search. Hopefully that answers your questions. Thank you. It's media you can do. And I really meant what I say. 
because I practice a lot of meta thinking myself ever since I was born. Because I'm born with that, basically. I'm already self-aware. Yeah. Any other question? Feel free to ask. Challenging question, I love it. Disagreement, I love it even more, actually. So, this and it's our last uh, session before dinner, right? So, you know, you could... Uh, okay, how many... Answer, let me ask you your metabolism. Okay, yeah, go, yeah, ahead. go ahead. Do you have any concrete examples of how we can change the way we educate like, the young generation in order to do this? Concrete example, uh, I always practice my children with meta thinking, literally, ever since they were young. Eh? I don't worry about how, how they acquire knowledge. I focus on how they think about how they think. And that is not an easy thing to do. Huh? So th that is uh, my personal experience. Okay? I'm not saying that my children are perfect. I'm also working on some research with two professors from Indonesia at a private school. They are very curious because they have a lot of big populations. So they are doing a research. I'm trying to find out what they are finding is through their effort because I contribute a part of my time. Um, and I think there are many things we need to teach our children differently now. For example, how many know what is United Nations SDG goals? Oh, okay, only 30%. This information are not even out there. Do you know why the United Nations SDG goal is incredible? It's the first time 8 billion people are more or less agree on this thing and has not changed much, you know? Or more or less we agree these are the things that we all agree. And that is, a, that is probably the biggest accomplishment of the United Nations today. I mean, to get, to get 8 billion people to agree is tough. Now, make sure your children understand that. Okay, start with that. Simple as that. Make sure that Hey, mom, uh, children, you know, Nancy, please read uh, these 17 goals. You know what they do? Uh, that's a start. Basic start is awareness of education. Aware that of this thing, aware that meta thinking is important. But no children is tough because you need to get to the parent first. But the parent is the one that is hard to change. That's why I'm focusing on leaders. I, I want to develop a new leadership, a future of leadership based on the new era of AI. Because all leader has to be, will be changed. Because a leader doesn't have better level thinking, you're not going to stay in your job for too long. Right? And by the way, uh, let me ask a question. How many of you are worried about AI? Please raise your hand. Be very honest. You see, that, that's my concern. Because the people who raise it, I would say, you have thought through it. If you read my book, I say, AI is digitally organic. Do you know what is digitally organic means? We are human are organic, right? We keep learning, we keep evolving, we keep mutating to our DNA. We keep learning, we're different from any animal. We write books, we write things down so we can pass to the next generation. It's transfer knowledge and transfer experience as well. In addition to the DNA. AI is going to be doing it on steroids. They'll be learning so fast and they keep evolving. So with all the IoT, other than learning from human data, human curated data, or IoT data from the environment, they're going to learn from animal. they're going to learn from plant. They're going to learn from the aliens through the telescope. A weak human can't even do that. There's no way we can keep up with the learning. And also, you, you read uh, what Elon Musk has done and also what Geoffrey Hinton mentioned. If there are one million Tesla cars driving out there, all of them are learning in one million time, and the moment they learn something new, in split second, all one million has the knowledge. Now. I, let's say I'm really smart. I want to teach you something. I tell you, it's so inefficient. You probably would disagree with me. You probably don't understand what I'm talking about. How the human connectivity in terms of learning is very, 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 very slow. We are like snail compared to uh, AI learning. But AI has other limitations. And we need to think meta level thinking. In fact, you guys heard about uh, a case, right? Alpha Go beats a human, right? Lisito. Then, uh, then Alpha Zero beat it again. Uh, okay. Then suddenly somebody, uh, I can't remember the name, it was in my book, who actually picked uh, another AI to figure out how they defeat it, and he defeated Alpha Go. Ah, that human can do something like that. It's actually in one of my chapters, I can't remember which one now. So this is an example of where we humanity got to go and think of something that is unique to ourselves. Thinking, meta level thinking is not easy. Huh? Try it yourself. I also find it difficult. 
Okay? Hopefully that will help you to be aware. Let's do something for humanity, for AI. Thank you.